Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. Today I want to talk about uh, one of my favorite European comic artists and that's Francois Buc. You can roughly divide his work into three stacks like I did here, um, at least the comics that I own uh, from him. Um, comics that were written by himself, uh, comics uh, that were written by Alessandro Jodorowsky, and stuff that was written by Jérôme Charin. Um, starting with the first stack here, um, you have to know that François Buc started his career as a caricaturist for newspapers and magazines, in particular uh, Playboy magazine. So no wonder that his very first character, uh, character, is in in himself a, a character caricature of the, yeah, typical European bourgeois. I have to say, even though Horst Katzmeier, which is his name in the German editions, uh, has a very untypical overboarding fantasy. He really lives his life uh, in a parallel universe. Even though he is actually an um, insurance salesman, uh, he thinks of the city as a jungle, and that's what is drawn uh, in all these stories. Uh, crazy ideas, and this is not so innocent because uh, the blue smurfs here uh, are used to depict his actual racism because they represent uh, the Africans in his sick mind. And uh, so s some of the stuff is really uh, a harsh satire, but it's overall it's, it's not uh, preaching or in any kind of sense, but uh, just fun, whacked out a story here with Leonardo and his friend there. And uh, Leonardo is actually really a cool guy, even though I would say uh, Leonardo da Vinci would have uh, looked a bit differently here. And they have to fight some sharks, which turn out to be some um, sub, uh, submarine. Uh, it's, it's totally bonkers, really. And, <laughs> but what what uh, a comic uh, art wise here uh, francois buc really started i don't have a weak uh, point here or a weak story in all these uh, th these books here uh, in which i could say okay here he was not as perfect as in the others um, it's just up to the tiniest detail uh, perfect artwork so Oh, don't know how to pronounce, uh, how to translate this stuff here. This little elephant guy between all the other elephants. Um, a collection of uh, whacked out short stories. A nice hardcover. Um, I have to say that this first stack isn't available, I guess, in English. Uh, the other uh, books from the second and third stack are available by humanoids and maybe other uh, publishers. Uh, but nevertheless, and hopefully, uh, this book here will be reprinted in, in English as well. I really hope so. Um, here, our host Katzmeier dude does it again. A lot of whacked out stories, but maybe the, mo uh, the darkest of them all is the return of the warrior and this is really yeah a creepy story about this guy here an upright citizen living the good life and more power to him um maybe he goes from his girlfriend and in a typical um book fashion he doesn't shy away of showing the ugliness of people and uh, then he visits his friends in the pub, goes to a supermarket, uh, borrows some uh, videotapes with uh, post-apocalyptic um, videos, goes to his little suburban house, and then it gets a bit mysterious. He, he um, hammers this tin can, 
look at the sly expression on his face here. It will come full circle because he puts uh, the videotape in uh, the recorder and plays it in a loop, puts on this uh, uh, clothing here. You, you see uh, the look out of subway, uh, submarine um, periscope. <laughs> and then he goes into the cellar and visits his poor wife. She, uh, she believes uh, there's a war going on uh, on the surface of the earth and <laughs> her husband is the hero and she makes her believe that uh, this war is still going on. Uh, there's a war still going on. And, uh, here's a nice collection of um, other Horst Katzmeier stories and different stuff. Um, Our Leonardo guy and his lover are there again and uh, in the back, I believe, yeah. <laughs> Here's a short scene and after you have read that, you may wa don't want to kiss again anybody because this is the grossest kiss scene ever. ever. And she has a mole on her shoulder and for those of you who are a bit faint of heart and uh, skip the next uh, seconds because uh, as you can think uh, what happens now and afterwards we are rewarded with a very romantic kissing scene <laughs> it's yeah okay uh, slip to uh, next uh, switch to something more pleasant and this is this huge fold-out cover, wrap around cover here, oh, I'm cracking a bit. But now let's continue with the stuff that is available in English as well, um, and with the Yoda stuff. So here we have uh, the three-parter of Mondgesicht, in English Moonface. It is published uh, by Humanoids as a huge tome which collects all the three uh, parts of uh, Moonface. Uh, in, yeah, as it is with Alexander Jodorowsky, you have to face and, and enjoy weirdness to enjoy this comic here. Um, and this is a very typical uh, Yodo in, in that regard uh, because it's whacked out in more ways than just one. Dealing uh, with this uh, little island, uh, Banana Republic, uh, in which uh, all the people um, that they are living are um, forced to, uh, to worship the cult of uh, eggs and eggs are very important and uh, it's breathtaking art uh, for sure and um, and the story will really grow on you I, I think. Um, you have this Banana Republic uh, uh, tyranny uh, and on the contrary uh, this naive innocent guy uh, with no real pronounced facial features. He's the moon face of the title and he is uh, capable of spiritual things. So, and as you know, Jodorowsky, you have pretty good inclination uh, in which direction this will go, but it's always grounded with this harsh realism of uh, Francois Buc. So this mixture is uh, is what it really makes enjoyable, uh, I think, very highly enjoyable, as it is with Bouncer. Um, the multi-part wild whacked out series of uh, Jodorowsky and uh, Francois Buc. Um, these are the first four-ish, uh, four volumes. Uh, the Humanoid uh, collection, I guess, uh, collected the first three uh, volumes here in a bit smaller size. Uh, that's why I uh, sold my Humanoids book and 
got the German one and uh, when the uh, original is in French I really don't have a reason to get um, the book uh, in, in English and I can read it in, in German which is very fine for me and as you can already see here uh, there's no shortage of violence and weird out ideas and maybe I never tire to show off this guy here if I can find him the guy that his has lives with a blade in his head here from an X and it's by far it's maybe the weirdest idea in the whole story here but it's uh, not the only one by far um, and and somehow the wild western uh, genre um, in general keep keeps a bit of Jodorowsky weirdness at bay so I think that's pretty okay because when Jodorowsky is on his own um, can get a bit too much sometimes even though uh, with a second or third read I always uh, think hey I love him I love that man he's he's maybe a bit problematic to deal with in uh, in the real life but he's a great guy so great creator great artist so now to the third stack and um, just to ra uh, rank a bit my comics here uh, my favorite uh, comics uh, drawn by Francois Buc has, have to be Bouncer and these two here uh, that Buc, Buc uh, did with uh, Jérôme Charin um, not so much to be honest with you this one here uh, the wife of the magician um, for me, it's a bit a transient a work of transition from the early uh, caricature, caricaturist uh, satire books to the more graphic novel format. Um, I mean, you have here some of the most beautiful art um, by Buick, um, no doubt about it. Look at this double page here, for instance. Uh, these panels here should calm your nerves, I guess, uh, after all the weirdness that I've shown you before. Even though uh, The Wife of the Magician is really uh, very weird, uh, as all the others. But beautifully drawn. Uh, this uh, lady here is Rita she's uh, the wife of the magician in the title and that's where my criticism of this book here um, is based on uh, because yeah the magician is really a buster, bastard and uh, he mm, was the lover of her mother and here's Rita in her younger days but he already had planned to make her um, uh, his lover uh, one day and while uh, his magic uh, sucked the life of her mother uh, and so how the characters are um, depicted here is is a bit poor and uh, can't really uh, the art is, is great uh, but you overall you get a bit of a question mark above your head uh, what's happening here and why are the characters uh, act like they do um, maybe this would make a good uh, movie of Federico Fellini or so uh, at, uh, at the time because it is full of crazy ideas with all these uh, circus people in it um, by the way, at the time when I read it, uh, it was really mind-blowing. Uh, I, I can tell you because there was nothing that I read before like this book here and it was from 1986 or 1988 and I I think I got it uh, real real soon back in the day. So it was revolutionary in, in many ways, at least for European comics, but today uh, it 
it's obviously that it hasn't aged that well. Which can't be said about uh, the two other books uh, that uh, were written by Jérôme Charin for François Buc. Um, Teufel's Maul, uh, The Devil's Mouth, about uh, this guy, Yuri, who was um, picked up in the Ukraine. He lived under uh, terrible circumstances with these, uh, under the cruel regime of these typical um, François Buc characters. And if you don't want to read comics uh, that include uh, evil human beings like this one here, yeah, just skip François Buc. Our main guy here, who always stands out because of his hair lip, uh, was picked up by the uh, communist uh, secret agency KGB, KGB, um, and became a secret agent uh, and uh, yeah, uh, the regime of this guy here. And, and like in Moonface, actually, uh, the Jodorowsky book, we have here a second world uh, as a contrast to the, the espionage and, and secret agency KGB world. Um, and yeah, it's not a far fetch uh, that this has to be delivered by um, the Christian religion or Catholicism and uh, Pater Grigori. Uh, who becomes a sort of a father figure for our main guy here. So there is a, a bit of spiritualism and especially in the ambiguous open ending. Um, I uh, don't know what to, to make of that uh, ending, even though it's pretty very well drawn and uh, Reminds me again a bit of Moonface, even though this is a totally different story uh, and set in the Cold uh, World War um, uh, Cold War um, period, and um, like Little Tulip is, and Little Tulip is. Um, you can read it totally uh, separately because the characters are uh, different, but um, it explores some of the same um, tropes here. Uh, we have this tattoo artist who lives in ni the 19, uh, 1970, he lives in New York, has this little tattoo studio, and here we have a girl that uh, actually um, gives the whole book its name. It's the tattoo store, uh, shop and again, look at this panel here. It's a random, a random pick of mine right now. Here I could pick this as well. <laughs> these, these characters are so real and 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 and, and fantastic. I don't know. It has to take ages to, to draw uh, stuff like that. And, and the expression on his face, you really see the blunt look of someone who really has experienced a lot in his life um, and feels a bit empty. And um, now he works for the police because he has a special ability to get um, the uh, faces uh, just when when some witness is talking about a guy or a, uh, some criminal, uh, he is able to draw these pretty accurately. And then we move back in time uh, when his family went from America to Russia uh, because his father uh, was an artist and he wanted to work with Sergei Eisenstein. And uh, very probably this wasn't uh, the best move um, because rather sooner than later he um, got problems uh, with the 
were the regime and uh, his family was transported to the prison camp, the Gulag of the Soviet uh, Republic. And um, our little guy here was separated from his uh, family, which is really, really yeah, uh, it's it's hard. It's a really hard and, and heavy comic. He has to watch how the women are um, raped by some gang of villains who sort of are the elite troop in this prison camp, which is really a world in, uh, for itself, a universe for itself. And, and outside doesn't matter. And inside you have these different castes um, and, and gangs who are fighting each other and who are, make up basically their own law. And these thieves and thugs that were raping uh, the women in, in the prison camp they uh, had um, tattoos on their back. And with some kind of disgusted fascination and in, in, in part of wise horror and part wise fascination, he, uh, the little boy watched the tattoos uh, on the backs of these men raping the women. So that was something that never left him. So it's very twisted and, and and, and and mad to think of that this was something that he made uh, his living of uh, later on. And here we see the little girl, uh, she tattooed a little tulip on her arm herself. Um, so, but his uh, special abilities to, uh, to draw and to um, eventually make art, um, make tattoos, uh, that was the key um, for him to survive the Gulag, the prison camp. And yeah, maybe I, I know a lot of people uh, would rank this uh, the highest amongst uh, books out, uh, output. For me, it's actually really a draw, as I said it, between uh, Devil's Mouth, Little Tulip and Bouncer. So as always, thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.